Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. I'm Stylosa and this is Overwatch. This. Hello, internet, and welcome to another episode of Overwatch This. This is episode, oh, I think it's 52. Sounds about right. Didn't check that before I left the office. As you can see, a bit different this week. Ben Barrett here, joined by Chris and Hayes, who are from the UK Overwatch World Cup team. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, good, good, thank you. Good. So, Chris, you're the main tank for the team and the yeah. captain. Hayes is the uh, kind of the coach. Keeps yeah, everybody it, right. Yeah, coach, Make sure yeah. they've got the water. <laughs> <laughs> is it a hard I job? I think I do a bit more than that. Okay, all right. <laughs> nice. Um, so you guys, of course, you guys are qualified for the actual World Cup this year, like for the, the main event at BlizzCon. Um, is that something you expected to happen when you were heading into the, the group stage? I mean, we had really high expectations of ourselves. Mm. I think um, we, we were scrimming in towards the end of it. We sort of, the last week or two before we moved out, the scrim results, we basically we, we were scrimming like uh, professional teams, like contenders team. We weren't really mm. dropping maps. We, we were rolling everyone. So we were pretty confident going into it. Um, and then obviously once the event came and we saw, because there's always a question mark about how a team's going to play like on stage. Yeah, yeah, it's obviously yeah, it's a big very difference. Different. Um, but we all relished it and we all excelled in it. So we knew pretty quickly that we were probably going to qualify. Was there anyone in like, because obviously you, you had to play like the other some of the teams from the other group as well. Was there anyone in that kind of mix that you were like, or anyone that you really, really wanted mm. to play? Well, we, our plan, if you like, going mm. into it, we expected Chinese Taipei to, to walk their group, we expect them to win it. Right. So we had, we have, we said to USA, we want to scrim you because we fully expect to play you. Right, okay. And we yeah, were yeah. trying to get as much scrims of Chinese Taipei as possible because we we thought that there was no way USA would beat them, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so we had all of our expectations on, on playing the USA in front of the, the USA crowd and like knocking mm. them out. <laughs> I mean, that would have been the best, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> what we wanted to do, but... Total savagery, but yeah. unfortunately, yeah, didn't, didn't get to happen. So, I mean, now that you've qualified for the main thing, um, we're going to be playing Sweden in the first round. Uh, in my understanding of esports as a global thing, Sweden are good, yeah. UK are not as good, yeah. but that doesn't seem to be the case this time. I mean, you guys seem pretty confident. Sweden I mean, definitely have some talented players, mm -hmm. um, but I think we also have some very talented players. Yeah. Um, I think the thing with Sweden is they, a lot of them are a team, obviously. They're misfits, so uh, they're going to have that edge, but we have, I think, the edge of a bond. Yeah. <laughs> so um, have, you, have you found that that's happened because you know you guys weren't all on the same team or anything you didn't all come from one event that you'd all been playing for like a year or so have you found that you guys managed to bond together like that yeah 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 really well like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think everyone that, that saw us at the World Cup or, or knows us can testify that we are like really genuinely good friends sure um, and so I mean you know do you think you can get past Sweden and if so where does the right end do you think you can win I think we can definitely get past Sweden mm -hmm. yeah um, I'm confident we can get to the finals. Uh, yeah. I think South Korea would be a tough feat, but <laughs> a challenge. Yeah. yeah, I think if we come second, I'd be very happy with that result. Mm. Yeah, I think I mean, we, yeah, Sweden should be tougher than whoever would face after Sweden. Look yeah, at the bracket. So. so it's Australia or Canada, right? No, I, uh, it's probably yeah, yeah, Canada. So. Yeah, right, okay, yeah, so really I think it'll be Canada. Canada yeah. Okay. So I, I think looking at that, that our bracket, our half of the bracket, definitely seems a little yeah. bit easier than the other half. Yeah. Um, Assuming it is South Korea in the finals, or in fact, no, assuming that it isn't, do you think there are other teams on that half of the bracket that you can beat as well? I mean, Definitely the United States, right? But their chance of getting I mean, past I, South Korea. I, I would fancy us against, against all of them, mm. I'd say. I mean, any team that beats South Korea is going to be good, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Do you think that's got a chance of happening, or, or are you really expecting those guys to, to take it? Are they as strong as they were last year? I think they are as strong as they, are last, they were no. last year, or if not stronger. Certainly um, the most dominant region? Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. They just have insane like team play, and mm. they obviously have some very mechanically skilled players over there. I think they have like a, a totally different like um, culture, which sort of uh, makes it easier to become a pro gamer or like to commit to gaming. They have lots of PC bangs over there, so you have these school kids who are like going to PC bangs after school, mm. playing games. Uh, it's like, but it's more of a social aspect over there as well, because uh, you like go with your friends. So I think it promotes like getting into esports more and sort of cultures more revolved around it. Yeah, well, talk to me about that, like, because you guys said that you managed to get quite a bond going, and obviously we don't have the advantages that they have where, you know, you meet up with five friends after school and that can be your Overwatch team for the yeah. next 10 years, yeah. you know, assuming the game goes um, on. How did you guys manage to get all that together? How did we? Uh, yeah, yeah, how did you guys manage to do it? Um, personally, I w I've always played, like, a lot of games um, mm -hmm. on, like, quite a high level. Um, but when Overwatch was, was released, I previously played CSGO and League of Legends on, like, quite a high level, so... Right. 
when this was released, I was like, oh, this game's like kind of like a, a hybrid of those two games. So I was like, yeah, I really want to try this game, see if I enjoy it, and then if I can become a pro in the game. Um, so that when uh, Open Beta was released, I sort of played it nonstop for like that two weeks. Um, and then I really, like, I was addicted. I loved it so much. Yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to commit to becoming a pro. And um, I tried to become a pro. And then um, there were some like team issues. And so I was teamless for a while. Um, so I said, OK, Chris, can I coach uh, your team and sort of give me some things to do uh, in the meantime that is still related to Overwatch? Uh, and after that, I went to Reunited. Um, and then E-United, and now, yeah, e yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, in, in terms of the actual coaching, you know, total jokes aside, how do you feel it benefits the team to, you know, have you, do you, do you feel you're a central element to it? I think I'm a key element to mm. the team, yeah. Um, I mean, if you, you see some teams who don't have any direction, they sort of, it can be quite, quite chaotic. Um, but if you have another person on the edge, who's sort of like an extra, extra perspective, because sometimes when you're playing the game, you might not see what the problem is, yeah. but someone from above who can see all of the things that are unfolding and happening can see like, and have a, a better perspective on that. Um, Do you find that as well, Chris? Like, yeah. That it helps to have somebody oh, yeah, outside of, of the game? Yeah. Um, I think going into it, I, I, I improved quite a lot over the World Cup, and I think Hayes is a pretty significant part of this. I think the fact that he was, he was the coach of, at the time, the best team in Europe. Mm. That was a pretty significant reason for doing UK because we didn't really have egos on the team. We never really had anyone saying, oh, no, this is wrong. Yeah. We were all like fully committed to saying, look, we, we can't question that. United are the best team in Europe, so mm. if this is the way they do it... We if have they play this way, yeah, you know, we yeah, can do exactly. that as well. Yeah. So like, Hayes was good. He would like, show me VODs of um, how a United would play, and he would say, this is what our main tank would do in this situation. I'd like, OK, and then... I kind of learned from it and improved with it. So, I mean, having a coach is definitely a, a significant factor. Do you think that has really helped you, you know, in terms of beat some of these other teams that maybe weren't as quite as coordinated? Because getting a, a coordinated World Cup team is half of the challenge, right? If you could just pick, hey, yeah, uh, the UK team will just have the best European team, never mind where they're actually from. But yeah. you can't do that. You have to pick yeah. six guys from, from this country. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, yeah, I think so. Like teams like USA, for example, they, they effectively just got like six players from six different teams mm -hmm. and then a coach from another team. Yeah. And you're kind of forced to like mesh them all into one and then there's going to be so many ideas. Whereas the way that Team UK ended up doing it is like at the time, I think three of the six of us were teamless and mm -hmm. then I was on a team and then obviously the two boys were me United. So we, so we had this situation where we weren't necessarily having to brainstorm, we more had a a guideline set for us and we just needed to, to conform into it effectively. Yeah, we had like a, we had basically had a core in place yeah. and then we sort of built around that core. Um, and that, it worked well, it worked well for us. When it comes to the World Cup um, in general, like kind of the system of it, do you like it? Do you, do you want to see it continue? I think it's definitely, it's very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it brings a lot of players together. And yeah. I mean, you're a team, you're a UK, you're, a UK, you're born in the UK, you're going to want to support UK yeah. and follow mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, and I think, a lot of people were like really proud that we went that far, and I was proud to represent yeah. Team UK. I think the way Blizzard ran it this year was a lot better than last year as well. Mm. I think the fact that they, I mean, it is still technically a show match, but the fact that it was very like serious. Every single team was like, let's put our best roster and let's let's try and win. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I think. I think. I just hope they keep doing it. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they will. Yeah. It, it seems like it, it's been quite popular. Um, I was talking to, to one of the guys who's been coming with you guys, um, you know, last style, yeah. and he was saying there was about, you know, there was a lot of people at the, the Santa Monica event that you guys played at. Yeah. Was that kind of the biggest event you guys had, had been at before? And was there kind of a, a difference in that in, in terms of being in, such a, in front of such a large crowd? Yeah, it was definitely the biggest crowd I've played against mm. by, by quite a margin. Um, and they are loud, like, especially the USA games. Like, so we would be in, like, in the back and we'd be scrimming and stuff. So we'd be behind stage with headsets on scrimming it and you, we couldn't hear each other for the USA <laughs> chance. It was ridiculous. Is the dream playing USA in the finals at BlizzCon? Yeah. I was, yeah. yeah that would be the best, right? I we, mean, really, yeah. we really wanted to play USA <laughs> in their home, their home garden. And, and take them down. Yeah. Yeah. Four hours, yeah, yeah. whatever worked. Yeah. 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 Didn't get it this time, but oh, you well. know, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll yeah. get past South Korea and yeah, China. Maybe. And, maybe. Okay, cool. So, you know, that's the, the tournaments you guys have been playing in. What about the game itself, Overwatch? It's not the most popular game in the world, and sometimes it does feel like it's struggling. Do you think that has to do with game balance, or do you think it comes down to something else? Um, I'm not sure. I think the game has had a tendency to, to stay the same meta. It, mm. Patches tend to not shape things up, and then when they do, it seems like they maybe, like, overtune a hero. Like, Mace is a perfect example, <laughs> right? Like, the reworker, and then 
she was so ridiculous that they've had to, to tune her back in. Um, I think the meta right now seems to be a decent place. I'm seeing mm. teams be able to run, I guess, like what we'd call tank comps with like a Reinhardt Zaya, but also being able to run dive relatively freely, and which I think is where the, the best place needs to be for the game. You want to be in a situation where sometimes teams are, there's, there's almost like two strategies to run like on mm. different maps and stuff. It forces teams to be versatile as opposed to teams where they just have six people that only play one hero and yeah. you kind of get away with it, do you know what I mean? What do you prefer playing yourself? Like, you know, do you prefer those dive styles? Do you prefer the you know, more tank-heavy styles? I still really love playing Reinhardt. I still mm. think my Reinhardt is like... Say it, best in the world, say it. <laughs> I, I don't know about the Koreans, but I, I do think I'm the best in the, in the West on Reinhardt. So mm. whenever I get an opportunity, I'm, I'm pretty happy to play it. It's a shame because I always say this for like, whenever Winston's potentially fallen out of the meta, it's always... I'm quite good at this hero now. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to play right so now, I've, I've, I've trained up on this yeah. hero. I don't mind if he's, yeah. <laughs> if he's good. Come on. But yeah. I still, I still prefer Reinhardt comps. I think it's still where I was at my, my best. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, what do you love about playing Reinhardt? Where do you feel like he's strongest at the moment, even when, you know, maybe the meta isn't perfect yeah. for him? Um, the, the thing with Reinhardt is, I feel like him more than any other character in the game, um, how well you do is completely related to, like, how your opponent Reinhardt's doing. Like, mm. there's a lot of mind, mind games and stuff involved. So, like, there's, there's exactly great satisfaction when you use in, your in like, effectively, like, outplaying your opponent and then you win on the back of it. Mm. Like, with Winston, I'm, I'm, I can play better than the other Winston, but it's not like I'm outplaying him, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas when you, when you shatter behind his shield or you block his shatter or something, mm. it, it's super satisfying. Yeah, and, you know, there are actually moments where you will block his shatter yeah. and then counter shatter yeah, at exactly. the same time, and it's a complete side yeah. switch, so to speak. It, it, do, do you find big moments like that are, are one of the strengths of the games where you know, a lot of things can happen all at once, but it does look particularly yeah. spectacular? I mean, yeah, there are a lot of uh, mm. moments. Like, like you say, like the, the big ultimates, the big players. I think maybe the, the only problem is it happens quite frequently, mm. of which I always wonder if the game has even got the potential for a player to be so special that it sticks out in someone's mind. Like, if you look at other esports games, I think you can... You can see moments in history which, like... Yeah, stuff like the play at the, the international... Yeah, and, yeah, and, the, uh, the Peke backdoor, for example, yeah, which yeah. Like, becomes infamous throughout time. And I don't, I don't know if Overwatch, because it's so fast-paced, six-man six mm. Genji blades, they happen quite frequently yeah, yeah, in comparison. Yeah. I don't know if the big moments stick out, but you definitely get more, more big moments in... Do you think that's something you could... Do you think there is a fix to that? Like, do you, know, do you just triple um, ultimate charge times or something like I that? Mean, or is that I, just going to turn yeah. it into I'm very boring? Sure. I, yeah. I think... It would be interesting if they, they reduced the ultimate charge rate again, mm. but I think Overwatch has to, it has to understand what it is. Like, it is a fast-paced like, ballerina, whatever, whatever the <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. But it's what it lacks in like, these like, super hype moments, mm. it makes up for in the fact that it's like, super fast-paced and there's no slow, boring lane swaps or whatever, you know what I mean? So yeah, you've yeah. just got to, got to understand what it is. And like you know, every it feels like a lot of the heroes, particularly the most played ones, are very, very, um, you know, high skill ceilings on that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Well, thanks for your thoughts on the balance of the game, as it were. Thank you very much for joining me, Hayes. Thanks very much, Chris. Thank you, um, thank you very much for watching. Overwatch this. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the episode. Please do hit like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. We'll see you next time.